you've got uh, two different possibilities of who you're going to play on Monday. How does that impact how you're preparing, what kind of film you're looking at, things like that? Yeah, no film yet. Uh, uh, no different. Same, same work week uh, as a normal week. And then as we get closer to those two uh, opponents, we'll, we'll have some discussions probably on not until Sunday. Uh, we, we know them well enough. We played those teams. Uh, you know, we just played Notre Dame a few weeks ago and uh, also really familiar with Penn State. So um, we, we won't do anything specific until, uh, until Sunday. Tony, to the outside observer, uh, this team looks pretty similar to last year's team. You know, you finished seventh last year, you finished first this year. You know, have you thought about it during this time off, you know, what, what enabled that to happen? You know, guys who took steps up forward and, and things like that? Yeah, just I think, uh, you know, last year was pretty much completely the opposite of this year. We were disappointing because we weren't very smart and mature on how we played. Um, we decided to become a team this year and learn from last year. And, and I think that's just part of, of sports and hockey. It's part of individual growth um, is, is recognizing and being honest with yourself as individuals and as a team. And I think we started, you know, to evaluate last year as it was going along from the coaches all the way down through all of our players on what was going wrong and how do we fix it? And, you know, last year's disappointments gave us an opportunity to learn from some of the things that we think we did wrong. And, you know, we use the word right from the first day of training camp or the first day we got back on campus. Maturity is a thing that we're going to have to use a lot. And, and really, that's what our team has to understand is important. We have to mature as, as a team and as a group. And, and uh, I think that that's been a pretty common theme all year. Uh, the the other one of, hey, this is going to be a difficult year for everybody. There's going to be challenges thrown at you from all different directions. And we got to just go about it and not flinch when things happen. And that's kind of been our attitude on the ice. Don't panic. You know, when something happens, you get a major penalty and it's a one goal game. No problem. You got penalty cooks. Bad call goes against you. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll kill it off. Uh, you know, you've got to play with 15 players tonight. No problem. We'll get through it somehow. And, and so it's been that type of a year. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's kind of been the attitude of the guys. And it starts with the captains. I can't, I can't say enough about them. And I say it over and over and over when people say, you know, what, what is the dynamic of the team? And I said, well, it's a team that's led by, by not only the four captains, but the rest of the group understanding that coming together as one uh, was a big part of, of uh, something we missed last year. Um, you know, and, and again, it's probably because we were really young last year. We, we handed off a lot of responsibilities to young players that were coming into college hockey. And this year we're, we're more mature, we're more understanding of what it takes to, to come together as a group. And I, and I give Everson, Inamoto, Vice, and, uh, and Baker a ton of credit for, for really rallying this troop and pulling them together. And then uh, Mel Pearson told us he's already got the steakhouse picked out where he wants a nice dinner uh, the next time he's in Madison. Yeah, I heard that was a little bit of an exaggeration about a steak. <laughs> um, he congratulated us on, on, on our win, and I, and I congratulated him on his win, and, I, and obviously it did help us. Um, you know, it was, it was uh, you know, the second half of the year was bright. It, it was. You know, when, when we looked at the standings and where we were and where Minnesota was at a certain point of the year, it was like, okay, let's just continue to, you know, try to close the gap and see if we ever can put it, you know, put a stretch together where we can put some pressure on them and, and get back in it. And, and I don't think we looked to chase them down. We looked at just trying to improve each and every weekend. Now, once we got on a, on a roll there, uh, once we went into their building and we were able to get a couple wins, uh, the group gained confidence. And, and really, we looked at each opponent. Uh, in a different way, you know, Michigan State this weekend, everyone looked at it, you know, it's going to be a kind of a pushover. You guys have got a lucky break. You're playing the last place team. They weren't a last place team. That team Saturday was, I don't know if they could have played any better, harder, gave us more struggles than any other team in the conference. They, they were really good. And uh, that's kind of what, uh, you know, it's been what we've been faced with all year is, is our conference is darn good. If you're going to win, you better be at your best. And, 
And fortunately for us, we've, we've been able to get a, a, a role at the right time of the year and we feel good about ourselves, you know, heading into the playoffs and, and hopefully the tournament. Thank you, Tony. You up. Thank you. So you said before the season that you thought this could be a big year for Josh S. What made you say that at that point and what have you seen from him since then to either confirm or or go a different direction in your thoughts there? No, he, he's been really, really good. I think the, the part that when we've gone down to 4D is when you've really seen him step it up. Um, I think he's one of those guys probably like the other three when you get four, they like it better because they're on the ice more. And uh, his, his uh, confidence, um, his, his uh, you know, commitment day in and day out to, to being better and, and showing up you know, with, a, with a game face in practice and in the games has been an impact on, you know, on our whole team. And, and that's kind of what the whole back end has been. You know, so it's the shot blocking part of it. It's the physicality when you need it. It's the box out at the nets. Um, you know, we haven't asked him to, to, you know, change his game. We've asked him just to, to be consistent and play, you know, play with, a, you know, some grit. And he's, he's done that. And so I, I've liked his game a lot. Uh, I think that, you know, he came in as, as a young freshman. Um, he was really poised. It was a really great quality to have. But sometimes it looked casual. In the last couple of years, there's no ca- there's no casualness to his game now at all. It's it's intense, and, and he's he's ready to battle and compete every night. So I think he's really, uh, you know, had a had an outstanding year. Dylan's uh, poise is is unlike a 19 year old, isn't it? <laughs> he does a lot of things that most 19 year olds can't do. Yeah. He, he, uh, you know, there's a guy last year, um, I thought it was an outstanding freshman year, um, you know, and then it was going into the draft year and you hear a lot of scouts saying, well, he didn't have a lot of points. And, and to some extent that was true, but if you watch the games and you watch the plays he made, uh, and you watch the impact that he had on games and, and how he was able to handle the physicality of it and the grind of it as a, as a, 17 slash 18 year old last year, uh, you know, you knew eventually that the, the, the offensive production was going to keep up with the chances that he's creating. So I think this year, the, 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 you know, expect them to have a, a great, you know, improvement. Absolutely. But, you know, the second half of the year, almost two points a game, um, you know, has it's, it's been a remarkable run. So um, he continues to gain confidence. He continues to find ways to get better. Uh, his, his, you know, this is his first year at center. Last year, we play him at left wing. This year, we move him into middle because of the necessity of, of needing the center. Uh, and uh, not only has he been able to produce, but you look at his face-off numbers, you look at, you know, the big face-offs. Uh, and he's, you know, he, you stick him in there, and if we need the puck, he's going to find a way to get it. An example is the Notre Dame goal. I think he won the draw and vice his goal. Uh, but he, he had, you know, he's, his commitment to, to learning and uh, and that's not a new position because he came in here from, from the AJ playing center, but but uh, it's his first you know crack at it in college hockey, and obviously it's gone really really well. And he doesn't get knocked off the puck or his skates, doesn't seem you know. No, and, and that's the thing from last year to this year is you know last year he wanted to to, to carry the puck a lot of times through the neutral zone and then on the entries, and a lot of times he was getting squeezed out and didn't have room, and you know. He turned the puck over there, uh, you know, more than he needed to. This year, um, his understanding of, of, you know, if he doesn't have room, of, of how to self-chip to himself, uh, of how to actually go through, you know, he's gone through players and defenders to, to you know, drive and wide. So, uh, again, it's just a confidence thing. It's a, a you know, a kid that's, uh, you know, does, every, I mean, every day. We showed up Sunday morning after Saturdays. You know, trip back home Sunday morning. We got the injured guys on the ice, and Corey Dillon shows up to go on the ice with them. You know, he just loves the game, wants to be on the ice, wants to get better. Yeah, the assist he had on Cole's go-ahead goal on Saturday. I what? I I've got to ask him in a while, but do you know whether he knew Cole was there? Because if he doesn't, then that puck comes shooting back the other way. That, that's not a great position, but I mean, it looks like a great play in the end. He's got a have some 
pretty good hockey smarts to make that play. Yeah, he. I asked him after the game uh, if he knew Cole was coming one, and then I said I asked him actually if he called the reverse. And he's you know because a lot of times his opponents on the forecheck will go in and they'll yell reverse and, and, and you try to you know make the defense and turn it over there thinking that the partner was yelling. He didn't yell in reverse. He said he read it earlier in the game he just missed it, and he recognized he was the same player that did the reverse on him earlier in the game. And this time he was ready for it. So when he went in, he he actually. He didn't know if it was Cole coming down the middle, but he knew that when he was entering the zone that someone was coming in behind. So he threw it to a space. And, and you got to remember when teams are going back to break out, you, you, they're too deer behind the goal line and the center's going low. So if you get the pass both those guys, the next two players are your next two four checkers coming in. So that's just a hockey sense play. Uh, I don't think he, he knew he was going tape to tape on the best goal scorer, you know, on our team in college hockey. Uh, but, but I do know that, that, he knew the play he was making was the right play. So it was, uh, you know, it was a sensational read on him on reading the reverse and then being able to get it back out to the front of the net. And then the, the, the catch and release on Cole, he caught it. You know, he didn't just fire it in his chest. He took, caught it, took one step, froze the goalie, and, and you know, obviously uh, he knows what to do with the puck when he gets in that position. Hey, Coach, going into the Big Ten tournament, uh, what are you expecting of players like Holloway? I think to, to be the same way, to be the same player. Um, you know, we, you know, I, I think a lot of times when players get in the big games or you go into an elimination game or you go into game seven or, or whatever, get really, really excited and you think you got to do more for your team to do better. And that's not – that's actually the opposite. You got to do the same things you're doing as a team uh, that's gotten you to that position. And so I don't, I'm not going to ask Dylan to do anything different. Cole, Tyler and Amoto, Ty our goalies, we want to play the same way. We want to play with the same discipline um, and, and, you know, uh, grind it out however the game's going uh, and, you know, find ways to, to have success on the four check, find ways to, to compromise, you know, put, their team in compromised positions defensively. And if we can do that, you know, we roll four lines over. If we can do that, you know, and then we'll continue to have success regardless of who we're playing. And I think that's really important for, you know, a maturity of a team to understand that. When you get to the big games, you don't ask more of yourself or more of players. You want yourself to play, you know, uh, the same rock solid game that you guys have played all year to put, you know, put ourselves in this position. Tony, I'm Tony curious. Uh, I'm curious. You, you obviously, you just you claim a title last weekend. You know the NCAA's are, are lingering. What's the importance of this week and, and this tournament, kind of in the grand scheme of things, when you're viewing what the goals were for the whole season? Just like every game, you 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 know you respect your opponent. You want to put your best foot forward. Um, you want to you want to continue to improve as a team, and you want to accomplish something special as a group. Um, I think so that, so from that standpoint, we're not looking to the tournament thinking this is just a warm up for it or uh, it's okay. We already won the, you know, um, the conference, Th this, this next game is, is our most important game. It's the only game that we, we know is on our schedule right now that we can prepare for. And, and that's the way we're going to approach it. So, you know, it's nice to, to know that, you know, with everything we've done, we're, we're probably going to get a tournament bid, but but that doesn't prevent us from trying to do everything we can to, to win the playoffs. Are any of your uh, injured guys from the last couple of weeks skating this week, or do you uh, have any update on? Sure, all three, of them, Owen? Yeah, all three of them are on the ice in practice today. Uh, it wasn't a uh, full contact practice for our team, so it was a good day for them to get up and down the ice. Uh, tomorrow they will be in full contact practice. Uh, so far, everything's gone for all. Everything's gone well for all three of them. Uh, so um, it looks it looks really good for this weekend for all. You were able to have those the guys that were out or that were there as spares over the weekend come onto the ice after. But the one guy that wasn't was Tyler Inamoto, who meant you know obviously a, a pretty good amount to you guys winning a regular season. How is he able to be wrapped into anything you guys did afterward? Um, I don't know if he, he was part of you know, phone calls in the locker room or anything like that to, to get him involved. Oh, yeah, the guys the guys called him. They, they, they FaceTime with him right away. Um, 
So, yeah, he was part. We would love to have had him. You know, we made the decision uh, the day we left of it would probably be better off for him to stay back here. Uh, and and uh, you know, we didn't need him to travel. The other two guys were really close to playing. Uh, we probably could have played both of those guys uh, in the second game. Um, but after, you know, discussions with, with Andy and our doctors, we thought it would be better just to, you know, to give them the six or seven more days uh, in between games. So it turned out well because we, we got the win. And then we came back home and, like I said, you know, and, and Mike and, and Owen were all on the ice with me on Sunday morning. Uh, so it was they, – they felt great. They had a great skate. Uh, they jumped right back in the practice the last uh, – last two days so they're in a good spot to be to be ready for, for this weekend and, and you're right the, the part you mentioned about you know Eno's a huge part of our team he has been from day one um, he's 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 hard to play against he's our shot leading shot blocker by you know a mile he sets the standards an example of what it's like to be hard nosed and tough to play against and and for sure the guys know that and you like that missing him and not being there for for the, the game on, on Saturday uh, they knew that that his contributions were a huge part of why we had the chance to be in the position we were in. So uh, you know, he's just, we 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 photoshopped him into that picture. I don't know if you saw that that picture yet, but he's photoshopped in there. <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was Marco Sita's daughter that that did the original Photoshop. Uh, uh, she did a great job. So Ana was laughing when he saw himself in the team team picture in celebration. Tony, earlier today, Jeff Jackson said that um, for, for him playing at home, he missed the band, he missed the fans. But when he played on the road, he, he didn't miss the visiting fans or the bands. But what's your experience been and, and what do you expect uh, this coming weekend in uh, South Bend? Oh, I miss the fans and the band and everything else in every building we went to. That's the experience of college hockey is having that spirit. And walking into different places and having your, your student athletes experience, you know, walking into Penn State, walking into Notre Dame, you know, walking into all of you know, Michigan, Minnesota, and, and having, you know, that's a big part of it. So we definitely missed them at home. Um, I, the thing that I've mentioned since the day, day one of, of the start of the season, the caliber of play, the intensity of the play, the commitment of these kids to play at a league level. Um, I don't want to say it surprised me, but it didn't disappoint me from the standpoint that you thought they would lose a little bit without having the adrenaline of running out and having 15,000 fans screaming as you, as you came out of the gate or have the increased creatures or student sections going nuts. That didn't take away from their intensity or their commitment to, to their team and to their school and to the university. So I, I think that part of it for me was really, really uh, uh, remarkable to see uh, how our league you know, I didn't, I wasn't in another building to see how any other conferences were, but our competition from, you know, every one of our teams, including this last game we just played against Michigan State, you know, that, that was intense, great college hockey. And, and I think that's been that way since the first, first day of the season. I don't want to assume anything, but are, are you going with the same plan for goalies, knowing you yep. have potential for two games? Okay. We're going the same plan. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, you know, I'm pretty pretty confident we'll, we'll go that same same rotation that we have had. Uh, so they're they're both uh, they both have played exceptional for us. They both have earned the opportunity to play in big games. They both won big games for us. Uh, they're a great pair together. Um, I think they've made each other better as the years gone along. Has Cameron Rowe been one of the bigger surprises for your team this year, Tony? I mean, the numbers that he's put up, yes. Um, did we know he was a really good goalie that we were bringing in? And did we, did we expect him to maybe, you know, as a, as a young player, have, uh, have a little bit of uh, a learning curve coming into it? Yes, but his learning curve was having Robbie Badoon as his, his mentor. And he watched Robbie the opening weekend at Notre Dame on how he prepared, how he got ready, how poised he was, how he practiced. And I think that's been a, a great thing for a young goalie to come in and have an experienced guy that has had some success and also cares about helping his teammate out. So I think that pair right there has been a huge impact on his development and his confidence. And then, 
once you get in the net, boy, you, you talk about confidence from your teammates and your goalies. Holy cow. I mean, you know, our, our guys, you know, when they make a mistake or they need a big save, they know that, that, that these guys are going to step up and get the job done. So, so you know, Cam is, has been a, an outstanding freshman. You always, when you recruit kids, you always see the potential that they have. And you, that's why you bring him in. And we knew he had great potential to be an outstanding goaltender, and, and he's done it at a, at a really early time in his in his collegiate career. And and, uh, and you know, I think he's, his his work habits and his concentration and focus and practice and the details of of looking for ways to improve, you know, you know gets me excited because I think there is room to see him, you know, grow as a goaltender. Tony, take nothing away from what this means for your program or, or what it means for your players, but for you personally, having, you know, not won a WCAJ title as a player and, you know, having played in a Stanley Cup final but came up just short, what you to, to, you know, look up next year and see a Big Ten banner hanging uh, from the from the rafters of the Kohl Center? Uh, you know, you want to be part of something special, whether you're a coach or your player. And, you know, being part of it is the part that I, I uh, really enjoy so whether you're a coach like I said or a player when you're able to do something with a, with a special group of, of people um, you want to have you know you want to be associated with them for something that's special and winning the Big Ten is special and uh, you know, these kids I can't say enough about what they put into it and I will tell you that they've earned everything that they've gotten so far I mean they've worked for it you don't you don't you know, start a season in, in this conference and, you know, get anything easy. You got to have to earn it. And we've done it the right way. Uh, I think the work ethic that they put in uh, from day one, the confidence that they've had after coming off a horrendous season, I can't, I can't, you know, say how difficult that is. When you come off in and up of the season that we had last year to turn the attitudes around and the outlook and, and the uh, belief, that's a tough thing to do. And you don't do it without great character kids and great leadership from within your locker room. So I get, again, the captains, the kids that came back from last year's and said, you know what, we learned from last year, we're going to move forward and figure out how to, how to right the ship here. And you know, the feeling that it was going in the right direction, you know, from the opening game at Notre Dame, you could sense something different. And, it's carried on through really tough, tough situations. You go down, you lose five players at one time. You lose Dylan for 10 games. Um, you know, you play a games, you play four games with, you know, 15 players. Uh, different things have happened that have been really challenging. And this team, like I said in the first statement, we haven't flinched. I think one more question if anyone's got anything. And we got, we got Dylan waiting for me, so he'll have a lot more fun things to say than I will. Brian knows that. He gave a smile. I saw Brian smile. He knows that. Oh, I know. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Michelle, you have your hand up? Yeah, I'll jump in. Hey, Tony, how are you? Hi, Michelle. Good to see you. Um, Thank you. Real quick, how, how did, or I guess in what ways, I mean, kind of going through this universal, you know, um, challenge that we all are with COVID and all that stuff, did that impact the perspective of this team in being able to turn around their attitude and just kind of shift their focus on... Um, you know, what's really important and how to kind of rally as a team? I think that's accurate. Um, you know, we were fortunate um, in the summer when football got back on campus, they were the first ones to get back in and, and started to reopen the athletic facilities and training. Uh, they came back in June. Um, and then not too long after that, Coach Alvarez got a message out to me that we were going to do hockey next. And I was somewhat surprised by that. And, and I started contacting the players saying, hey, we might be coming in right after 4th of July. What do you think? And, and they couldn't wait to get here and, and begin, you know, the training for what we didn't even know if there was going to be a season. So I think the, the excitement of being back with one another, the appreciation of the university uh, opening the facilities to us early, uh, and the appreciation really for one another to be able to come together as a group and, and, and you know, play our, play our sport. I mean, Hockey players want to be together as a team and they want to play hockey. And we were given that privilege of uh, you know, being able to do that. The Big Ten did an outstanding job of being the first conference to get up and running. 
um, and our athletic departments, all of our athletic departments, you know, went out of their way to, to help us, you know, keep our assets because there were lots of players that had different options and places to go play, whether it be professionally or you know, moving on to different leagues. And we were able to, to all of our programs for the most part, uh, were able to keep all of our players. I think, and I think that's going to really pay dividends down the road in the next couple of years because there's been some teams in college hockey that have, have lost some of those players. But I think the respect that, that our conference gained as, as, a, as a, a conference for how we did it will only continue to get the, you know, the best players that come to our schools.